Bonjour à tous. Je vais commencer à introduire Léonie de Berlin en français. Il fera ses cours en anglais après. On s'est mis d'accord sur le, la façon de procéder. Pour ceux qui ne le connaissent pas, Léonide est en ce moment professeur à l'université Penn State aux états unis Il a grandi en Ukraine et il a fait ses études à Moscou. Il a fait sa thèse à l'Institut de physico-chimie de Moscou, qui maintenant s'appelle l'Institut Semyonov, du, du nom du, du fondateur de cet institut. Euh, et il est resté donc avec un monsieur qui s'appelle Ev, Evgeny Khrushchev. Euh, il est resté à Moscou, en, en Russie jusqu'en 1991, et depuis 1991, donc, il est à l'université Penn State, où il est devenu professeur en 2003. Euh, Léonide est mathématicien appliqué. Il travaille depuis le début sur des problèmes qui sont très pertinents pour la physique. Il a travaillé notamment beaucoup sur la théorie de l'homogénéisation et puis les, les problèmes d'équation de Landau. La théorie de l'homogénéisation, pour ceux qui ne sont peut-être pas au courant, c'est tous les problèmes où il y a plusieurs échelles, où il faut faire des études multi-échelles. Pour moi, c'est quelque chose qui rapporte au milieu poreux, parce que toute la physique des milieux poreux est un peu basée sur des versions un peu dégénérées de la théorie de l'homogénéisation qui, qui ont été faites par des physiciens. Il a appliqué, il a appliqué ça à, à des tas de problèmes. Euh, J'ai été regardé pendant sa thèse, il, par exemple, il a travaillé sur des viscosités de suspension de particules qui avaient un comportement non newtonien, qui sont des problèmes qui sont act encore actuels dans le milieu de la physique. Euh, depuis... Quelques années, il est directeur du Center for Mathematics of Living System and Mimetic Matter à l'université Penn State, donc où il s'intéresse à des questions qui sont plus proches de la biologie euh, et où il continue à travailler sur des questions d'homogénéisation. Alors, il y a des questions qui relèvent de la biologie, mais enfin, il a été dans d'autres domaines de la physique. J'ai trouvé des articles sur les vortex dans les supraconducteurs, euh, dans des, questions, des, des domaines qui relèvent... Euh, plus de, de physique appliquée à la biologie. Et il a beaucoup travaillé sur les suspensions de bactéries. En particulier, il y a toute une série d'articles sur la viscosité des suspensions de bactéries avec certains collègues qui sont... Si, il y a Igor Aronson qui, qui fait les expériences sur ces sujets-là. Mais il y a toute une série d'articles qui étudient ce, ce problème très, très en détail. Et puis, il y a quelques années, il a commencé à s'intéresser à, à la motilité cellulaire où il a développé des modèles de face field qui s'est qui est un des types de modèles dont j'avais parlé dans mon cours. Donc, ce qu'il veut faire aujourd'hui, c'est préférer. Il va faire quatre cours. Donc, il y en a un aujourd'hui. Il devait y en avoir un le 7 mars, mais vous savez que le 7 mars, c'est une journée de, de grève qui risque de bloquer tout. Et il y a une probabilité très élevée, d'après ce qu'on vient de nous dire, que l'administrateur du Collège de France ferme le Collège de France ce jour-là. Donc si c'est le cas, et on ne devrait le savoir que jeudi, <coughs> excusez-moi, on annulera son cours le 7 mars, et puis on transportera son cours, il fera une heure et demie au lieu de une heure aux deux autres cours suivants qui sont le 20 et le 21 mars. C'est la solution la plus facile parce que ça évite de chercher des salles différentes et c'est toujours un problème avec les cours du Collège de France pour chercher des salles différentes. Donc ça sera un peu condensé, mais c'est comme ça que ça se passera. Euh, ce qu'il veut faire, c'est repartir de, de choses que, que beaucoup de gens en physique autour de nous aiment bien, qui est la matière active, et montrer comment la matière active peut susciter des problèmes intéressants pour les mathématiques. Et moi, j'espère que les mathématiques pourront obtenir des résultats nouveaux pour les physiciens. Donc c'est un peu ça l'enjeu, de vous montrer comment, sur un sujet qui est maintenant ultra populaire en physique, on peut arriver à faire des mathématiques qui sont pertinentes en soi pour les mathématiques. J'espère que c'est ça le, le but du cours. Euh, donc, il va faire son cours aujourd'hui. I will switch to English for a minute because there is a tradition at Collège de France before you start, which is that the Collège de France gives you a medal of the Collège de France. So, you don't need that. <laughs> If I can open it. Okay, it can help. Yeah, here we go. So here is the medal of the Collège de France that is Merci given beaucoup. to any invited professor at the Collège de France. So you have to be careful in the plane that it rings all the bells and stuff like this. <laughs> it's going to be no visitors who had problems with things like this. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. We are very happy that you'll be here. 
La dernière chose que je veux dire, c'est que Léonide est très désireux d'introduire avec les gens qui viennent au cours. Donc si vous souhaitez discuter avec lui, surtout annoncez-vous. Et puis vous pourrez le voir, il est pendant un mois, donc à partir de hier, pendant un mois, dans, pas ici, mais à l'annexe du Collège de France 3 rue d'Ulm. Envoyez-lui un mail à Penn State, Léonide Berlian, à pennstate.eu, et il vous répondra, et il sera très heureux de discuter avec les gens qui veulent discuter avec lui. Voilà, j'ai dit à peu près tout ce que je voulais dire. Je lui donne la parole, donc, pour nous parler de mathématiques, de la matière active. OK. Merci beaucoup, Jean-François. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Great weather in Paris, everything is wonderful. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation, and thank you, everyone, for coming. So let me start from, OK, let's see what is happening. Probably my computer went, no, it didn't went to sleep. OK, yeah, it's a little bit sleepy. So the topic of my lecture is mathematics of active matter. And I listed a number of my collaborators from Penn State. Uh, students, postdoc, other collaborators, current po collaborators, and also I would like to acknowledge many discussions and work in pro progress with Lev Truskinovsky. Uh, okay, so let me start from brief overview what I'm going to talk about. Uh, my understanding is that in this audience you already had lectures by uh, Jean-Francois and Eric uh, Lauga on biophysical aspects of active matter. So my series of these four lectures would be complementary in the sense that I would focus on mathematical aspects of the same topic. And with the goal, though, that's what the idea, and this is an experiment. So usually I give many, many talks, of course, to mathematics, applied mathematics. But today I will try to switch and play on, not on my field, but on, on different fields, on the field of physics, and try to make something, what we are doing, transparent, and hopefully build some bridges. That's that the idea. And because of diversity of backgrounds, I don't know who, who is in experiment, who is in theory. I know some people, but not all. You're very welcome to ask me or to talk to me after, and I will integrate all the suggestions. Okay, and I'm, I'm available to talk. Uh, so previously, now, math means a lot. Math is a, lot, is a big world. So what was in this field previously, mostly, it's previously math was entering through modeling and computations. Computations, that includes computer simulations, computer simulations. And to many in experimental world, that's what mathematics would mean. But my focus would be different during these lectures. And namely, I would like the, the key question is what analytical studies can bring to the table? Right? That's by analytical study. I mean, when you derive formulas or mathematicians even prove something, rather than massive computer simulations. And how is that helpful? And why would we do this? I'll, I'll give you some examples. But in a nutshell, 
if you have a formula which describes certain physical properties, you can see how all parameters enter there, and you can say this is important for that. It's, you can interrogate the formula. And if you have massive simulation, you have graph, which is also important. You can compare against experimental graph, but it's a different aspect, right? Uh, <clears throat> So this, is, this would be like overarching goal, trying to convince you. And specifically, what I will do, uh, I will focus on several novel or interesting math, mathematical features, features or properties due to active matter, in modeling of active matter. Again, this deserves a little bit of explanation. When I'm trying to be maybe cautious and don't go who started active matter and when, that's a delicate subject. But obviously, when active matter started, number of physicists Physicists have to extend, or some even say revise, some concepts of physics because it's, because it's out of equilibrium, right? That's the key words. So you have to extend physics, and you have to develop some new concept which would be pertinent here. Now, it's all known since Newton that language, language in which physical laws are written is a beautiful language of rigorous mathematics. If you go to very classical Newton's law, whatever, it's math is language of physics. Math is language of physics. And therefore, when you change physical concepts, you have to adjust math. You have to, and math can also be novel and can be excited and would, would require some better understanding. And that's, I will try to convince you in that, right? And uh, <coughs> of course, <clears throat> and uh, one of the uh, simple examples, which I'm going to come back in details, just to mention that when we studied active matter, the, the key observation was that typically there is lack of variational principles. Of course, there is out of equilibrium, it's not surprising, right? But what I would try to do, like, not a general statement about active matter. Like, if you are an experimentalist, you don't do experiments with active matter. You do experiments with specific system, with flock of fish, with uh, swimming bacteria, something else, active gel. And Similarly, the route which I'm going to take, I will consider specific math models. And usually, the important thing is minimal. And I will explain what it is. Minimal math models. And just like physicists work in the lab on specific experiments, Mathematics also takes a lot of time, so you try to analyze this model, and this, this thing, and you can find the causes. In this, in this specific models, you can find the causes of lack of variational principle, math causes. You can do computations, you have formula, and then you see your operator is not self-adjoint. It's different from quantum mechanics. Why? You have all parameters, and this is, I will try to do, and the part of this is not even done yet. 
It's in a 1D models by, by Lev, Truskinovsky, which we are currently studying specifically from this angle. Because the problem is that these biological models are technically, mathematically, are very, very involving, very technically difficult. And you have to go for minimal models. And what is minimal model? Minimal model, if you try to, any, any biological phenomenon, try to model, it immediately becomes untractable mathematically. You identify one important experimental feature, and then parameters which are responsible, and then you, you, you work with this. So you kind of uh, decompose, but mathematically. So, so these causes, you can decompose them in your mathematical lab, you can decompose them, and see which one is important. And I will talk about that. What are culprits? Is it activity? It does, this thing is not just for, for uh, active matter. So we, we have to pinpoint where is activity here and where is other factors, like other external flux of energy or something like that. And when you have explicit calculation, you can do that. And that's what, what we are working on, OK? Uh, <clears throat> and, of course, what I was saying here, like physics of out of equilibrium systems, mathematics, or adequate mathematics, it's developing adequate mathematics is a monumental task. So what I will do, I will focus in details on two case study problem and then explain you in detail. So one is this. Uh, lack of variational principle. That's what I will talk in details. And why, why I'm focusing on variational principle from mathematical perspective. Of course, physicists know why variational and conservations are very important, related to symmetries. Uh, but from mathematical perspective, if there is uh, there is whole bag of tools which is called calculus of variations. This is, right, this is the first reason. And if there is lack, then it's all out. And the question is, what is the alternative? And that's, I, I'll try to show you. So I'm giving you a preview. What is the alternative? What can you do analytically if you don't have this bag of tools? And the second thing is why variational principles are so important because many numerical methods, numerical methods, for example, finite elements and many others, they are based on variational structure. So that's why you have to also develop something different from active matter. Okay? Uh, so, and as I said, it's going to be two case study biophysical problems. One is uh, motile cell or active gel. Active gel. This is in the spirit of active gel physics, which was proposed by uh, Jean-Francois and collaborators uh, in 2015, I think. And the second is swimming bacteria. Swimming bacteria. And my also, as I said, I'm, I'm not going to go for anything generic, because the lab which I'm closely interacting uh, with, it's uh, in mucus. In mucus. So very specific examples. And then I'll, uh, on these examples, I'll try to explain you. So I talk about uh, lack of variational principle. This is the first thing. And the second thing, which I'm going to discuss, and they're related, they're closely related, is non self adjointness. Uh, 
uh, of operators which determine, so this is in sharp contrast with quantum mechanics, where there is reversibility, conservation, and operators are usually self-adjoint. And again, you can just compute difference between operator and self -adjo and adjoint operator, and you can see formula. And it tells you what are the culprits. So that's, that's, that's my lab, okay? Because there is other avenues, mathematics, you can go to abstract spaces and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that. That that's still has mathematical value, but it has a problem of quickly losing connection to, to reality. Uh, so, <clears throat> now finally to conclude this introductory part, let me mention several of, uh, maybe summarize several of math math interests in the following aspects or math aspects which I am going to emphasize. First, I already talked about this, minimal models. And I explain you what it is and why they are important, because this is a starting point for me. Otherwise, I cannot analytically study anything. And developing good mathematical models is mathematics, I, in my opinion. Uh, then, stability of motion. Again, I told you these two examples. Uh, motile cell and swimming, we both have motion. And why, why stability? Why? There are many other features of motion you can study. But the point is that I'm, I'm presenting analytical studies. And if, if I have a model, I can just crank my numerical packages and keep, keep computing and can see on the screen, does it look stable, it does not. But if you come to the question, to the question of stability, you can answer actually many questions with simulations, no, no doubt. But if you come, for example, to the question of stability, you solve problem using certain numerical methods and there is numerical instability. instability and it conflates conflates with physical instability and then you don't know but if you if you really have rigorous analysis then it's then it's better Okay, and then uh, the other thing is collective behavior. Collective behavior, VR homogenization theory. We'll see how much I can cover. I'm flexible. That's a kind of. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, that means that you want to see what I'm writing. That's good. The homogenization theory, it has many averaging, many names, but upscaling, coarse graining, but I will explain you what I mean. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I will talk a, a lot about well posedness. Many of my physics colleagues doesn't like that, because if it's a physical problem, it should be well posedness, but it's for us it's still. And if I have time, the final thing would be, maybe I will talk, ab this is about learning. Uh, that's, that's entirely different aspect, which I just recently we wrote a book on uh, mathematical aspects of deep learning. So, but from the point of view of active matter, how system learns to behave under the same condition, learns to behave differently, if, if I can, but that, that's, that's very iffy, if I 
We'll see. Depends how, how lectures would go. All right. Uh, so this is general overview. And for any questions so far, comments? And for today, I will focus on this aspect of variational principle, but specific uh, what is heat flow, heat flow, that would be the first already technical heat flow. And I consider classical uh, physics allen Kohn model versus phase field model. It's called phase field versus active kind of phase field. And I will remind you active phase field for, for moving cell. And here I can just pinpoint you mathematically here where activity sits in the equations. And that's what it does and how it destroys the heat flow. But heat flow is the simplest concept, which, again, I know that I talk already to some students in the audience, I need to remind, and I'm happy to do that. And some of you, again, of course, know this very well. So that's integration would be. OK, so basically, this is oh, now it's really went to sleep. All right. So I can quickly go through introduction, because I wasn't sure who will be in the audience. So I talked a little bit about what active matter is. Oop. In my case study. OK. So this is a class of non-equilibrium system. And uh, we have two examples, as I said, bacterial suspensions and motile cells. And uh, oop. so this is bacteria, <coughs> most numerous species on Earth. And then humans, and study of bacteria is very fundamental to preventing and finding numerical diseases. So. <coughs> That justifies my case study number one. And it's also, I want to bring attention to students to like life at low Reynolds numbers. So it goes back to Bachelor and Light Hill. And of course, there are many most, more recent reviews. Uh, oh. OK, let me try to figure that out. OK, this is how my life started in active matter. When I saw, when I was in Chicago, and I saw reduction of effective viscosity. Usually, if you add particles into a fluid, then viscosity goes up, more friction, more dissipation. But it was an amazing experiment, reduction sevenfold. Uh, and for several years, I decided with Igor, we had joint project, try to explain it. And that's, in a nutshell, gives you my philosophy. At the end of the day, we derived a formula for this corrector to effective viscosity, where every physical parameter, you can trace it and say, this is what, why diffusion is important. You can see how it enters in which power. So you basically can like, do a surgery to your physical system using your mathematical formula, right? Uh, OK, and there are many interesting aspects here. Of course, uh, I'll try not, not to stay too long in this general introductory part. Uh, active turbulence is one of the interesting in bacterial suspensions. And this is what we have. In, in Igor's lab and what we, just to, to tell you a little bit about what currently happened. This is 
very recent experiments, which we also explain theoretically, B bacillus subtilis invaded mucus, and it's, there is preferred direction, and it's, of course, because mucus can be, acts more or less like liquid crystal with preferred directions, so that was interesting part. And the other thing is, just to show you why, because mostly what I'm interested in, interested in now is bacteria in, in a liquid crystal. Uh, and this is recent work, also both experiment and theory, when bacteria also swims in mucus towards shallow part of mucus field, then reverse swimming directions and swims faster and then really make U-turns. And this is again because of the property property of the media. So that that's gives you a question. When you study something, for example, what I will be studying, mathematical question, what's, what's, what's important here? Is it self-propulsion activity or is it property of the media? And we, we hope that mathematics can answer, or it's interaction of these two, that I will show you. Mathematics already answered some questions, but hopefully we'll, we'll answer more. Oh, and videos are from Igor's lab and his postdoc, uh, his student, uh, Nuris, did it, experiment. And this is, again, one more slide towards here because mucus is anisotropic and, and it's, uh, there is very uh, good uh, mapping to, to liquid crystalline media from theoretical point of view and from experimental point of view. Okay, uh, so this class of materials was called living liquid crystals, which I'm going to talk at the end. Uh, uh, and that says bacteria transport, bacteria form defects, topological defects was very interesting mathematical finding, and the strains of bacteria moving uh, after each other. Now, the second case study, and then I'll, I'll come to specific phase field model. The second case study is uh, cell motility. Uh, motile, and we start from keratocyte. And again, I have to maybe, uh, I don't know if this is motion of cell, but the, the most important motion is steady motion of, of cell and uh, Okay, this is I probably gonna skip. Uh, when when you put you touch and it's kind of moving instead of like solid body should stop because something is happening inside and that's mathematically to describe it mathematically and describe the causes. That's that was objective of first work. Maybe I shouldn't talk that much about what happens. Maybe I can say. I don't know how many of you know about myosin. Okay, maybe many knows, so then I shouldn't talk about this too much because in ma to mathematicians I always explain this. Uh, protrusion, contraction, and, and so on. Now, this is, this is an important slide. Uh, let me tell you. <coughs> so, here I was trying to put some phenomenon and what, what are mathematical tools. And then I will try to connect them in my lecture. So the, the phenomena, for example, which I will be considering, I told you I'm not going to consider anything very general. I will focus on specific experimental issues and try to relate it to specific mathematical issues and vice versa. So onset of steady motion, breaking of symmetry, what I showed you how this keratocyle start to move, it sits and then all of a sudden it starts moving and then it changes shape, breaks <coughs> symmetry, that was a big breakthrough. Uh, now Stability of motion. Stability obviously is important from physical point of view because it's observable and uh, finding an attractor when it's asymptotic stability. But mathematically, I will relate stability to spectral analysis. 
steady motion. Mathematical object would be travel and wave solutions, so certain equations, which is known since D'Alembert, and I will talk about this, admit certain type of solutions which describe same shape moving with constant velocity. And that's a big field of mathematical study called travel and waves, and that's what I will talk. One set of motion, how the sitting cell starts to move or other moving object, this says mathematically it's bifurcation theory, and again I will talk a little bit about that, but analysis of stability is goes through spectral analysis of corresponding operators, and that would relate to self-adjointness versus not self-adjointness, something which I already told. In the simplest case, self-adjoint, someone asked me what it is, it's like matrix, symmetric, or uh, Hermitian, or non-symmetric. Of course, there is something called Noether theorem, which relates it all to conservation laws. Anyway, so this is kind of uh, my uh, phenomena, and then and then I also will focus on something of a large-scale phenomenon of average and description of collective motion of bacteria, and mathematical tool is homogenization theory, which is not the same as just simple averaging or even simple mean field. So it has to take into account physics properly, and I will show you examples. And uh, the, the last which I'm going to mention today is stochastic modeling. When you have lack of information, you don't know exactly where positions of bacteria are, you can't measure it. So you try to introduce probabilistic distribution and work with it. How difficult it is, why it's advantageous, that's what I'm going to show again only in, in specific examples. Okay, so now back to variational approach, and I already told you that it's very helpful for various reasons, calculus of variations, numerical methods, and uh, let me now consider specific example and show, show you how this lack of variational principle manifests itself in, in a concrete problem, right? So for that, maybe I, I thought that it might be a good idea to remind what, what gradient flow or heat flow is in mathematics. Um, it's a general, very useful concept. Uh, when you have a problem where you use some, some field, uh, epsilon is small parameter, and this is like derivatives, called variational derivative. And uh, I'll give you an example. And when this small parameter goes to zero, you obtain some, some limiting problem. And what is epsilon? There is, I'm going to stick to Alan Cohn example, which is uh, alloy of two fluids of two metals melted, and uh, epsilon is width of this separated layer. Uh, epsilon could be in, in, in the problem of bacteria, collective swimming of bacteria, epsilon would be micro scale, size of bacteria versus size of, so, and number of bacteria, which is large, or small, one over epsilon small, okay? So, <clears throat> and uh, in Ginzburg-Landau, for example, the same format, same problem, it's coherence length. So, so this is a, an example which, which is how I started understanding this a little bit. Uh, this is a classical phase field model of Alan Cohn, those are physicists, uh, material scientists they were call, calling themselves, and uh, the U is order parameter, and it minimizes this functional. And when it minimizes this functional, uh, the U, e, U solves this, this equation, which is called phase field equation. So, phase field is a computational trick which allows you to study moving, what is a key thing in this, and this is a good place to, to talk about free and moving boundary, because it's going to be a 
principal hero and one of the causes of troubles of non, like, non self adjointness uh, this, this is a moving and deformable boundary. And of course, numerical tracking is it's a nightmare. But when you define U, which is in the whole domain, you can, you can track the boundary by solving equation in the entire domain, which covers. And you don't have to numerically track uh, a specific boundary, which is very useful. So what to expect in this kind of problems? What Alan Kohn discovered, what was a big, big breakthrough, and it was very interesting that at the same, exact same year, physicists discovered something called mean curvature motion, and a geometer, Bracke, discovered in the exact same year something called mean curvature motion. So if you take this limit, you can observe that normal velocity to the interface is, pro is proportional to curvature, which is called mean curvature. It's a beautiful mathematical phenomenon which, is, which was observed physically uh, by Allen and Kohn. So, and, and uh, by now, of course, very general mathematical tools, which I'm not going to go into, uh, they're called gamma convergence techniques, were developed for nonlinear analysis and which allows to take such a limit, right? Uh, and this is, a, this is a technique of calculus, of modern calculus of variations. So, uh, obviously in, uh, in a passive systems, gradient flow is always non-decreasing, could be plateau, but in active matter, you pump in energy, it can oscillate, and it could be even anti-dissipative. So, so this is the reason uh, which you can guess. But now, how it manifests itself? That's probably would be the, the, the main thing which I will try to explain. Uh, so let us consider something which is called active phase field model. And this is due to Igor Aronson in 2D first. There are many subsequent numerical studies. So what is it? Uh, this is my cell, and it's on substrate, and cell is like two-dimensional. And uh, I, what is phase field? Phase field is a trick. You say that something is equal to one inside cell and zero outside cell, and then it sharply decreases in like membrane epsilon size, right? So that way, and then you write equation for you in the whole thing. So that's why you don't have to track numerically the interface. Interface is embedded, embedded. if you know about you, right? That, that the, the point of, it's a very nice computational trick. Okay, so for cell, there is a phase field parameter, but there is also P, which is average orientation of filaments, of actin filaments, okay? And uh, what was proposed is the following. So those are two equations. They, the evolution equations, mathematician would say they're of parabolic time, type, first derivative in T, and uh, second derivative in space. So this first part, it precisely corresponds to Allen Kohn, something which I showed you. The uh, memory, uh, the, 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 oh, okay, the, the alloy of two metals, of two melted metals, right? Uh, however, and, and the second part is evolution of this uh, diffusion equation for evolution of the uh, orientation of filaments. Now, epsilon here, width of the boundary. Beta is a coupling term. It's adhesion strength, growth rate of filaments. And basic, uh, uh, double well potential system can be either state one, which is outside, or, uh, which is inside, or state zero, which is outside. Two, two wells, just like, like in Allen Cohn. 
So we try to uh, we try to uh, write the variational principle, the heat flow. We try to, to, to write it in a form of heat flow, which Alan Kohn assumes. But it turned out, and one can show this more precisely, that precisely these two terms, the, this is a protrusion term. I can actually explain quickly the meaning of each, each term. Maybe I should go in there. Okay, so this is W is responsible for self-separation. I want, I want to explain this example because it's the first time where I, uh, I encounter this phenomenon. So uh, this is diffusion, makes rho smooth. This is drift. This is a, a, a term due to, this is active term provides net motion of interface, uh, and uh, lambda of t is uh, mass preservation or volume preservation con constraints, and this term gradient rho is also creation of filaments perpendicular to membrane. Okay, So if I go back to uh, my phase field model now, Oh, no. Okay, let's. Okay. If I go back here, so the conclusion of the analysis that this beautiful heat flow structure, which allows us to take limit and, and use this calculus operation tool, is destroyed precisely because of these two active terms. So, like I promised you, I pinpoint mathematically where they are, not just saying some words. Right, and we can prove it, but and then the question: So, what what are what, what are the consequences of this, and how to deal with this? That's probably what would be a good stopping point. <coughs> so, first of all, notice that this coupling we call it mathematically is gradient coupling in a classical Fitz-Nagumo systems. There's coupling by function, but here it's coupling by gradients, uh, and. Uh, when I try to, when I talk to my friend, mathematical friends, which study reaction diffusion equations, the typical tool is comparison principle, maximum principle. It's all out because of the active term. So it's the same, the same reason, same as variational principle. And you can see this term, you pinpoint it, and then the question is, what's what you can do? with this. Uh, so, for, for example, this gamma convergence flow also doesn't work. There is some beautiful viscosity solution techniques due to Pierre-Louis, Crandall. They also, they're all out. So that's how, from mathematical perspective, uh, now you see how, how it gives you active matter, raises questions, and which needs to be answered. So basically what, what we did here, we still proved something like uh, this is this is Alan Kohn part. This is mean curvature, but we also found some effective term, integral term, in an explicit way where all physical parameters are here, which is responsible for active term, which is responsible for activity, which resulted uh, from these two term, from myosin contraction and from uh, from protrusion by acting filaments. And it's all explicit formulas. You don't have to pay attention too much. The point is like Bessel function or something, something which is well known, solve solution of some known equation. But you have the formula. So you can, you can answer any questions. You can compute it with any, any number of precisions. But that's, that's how your interface, so now behavior of your interface in the limit, it's not a two-dimensional problem, but evolution of curve of gamma of t, which is huge reduction of computational complexity. But in order to take this limit, okay, as I said, normally the, the typical uh, approach would be here, would be gamma convergence of gradient flow, uh, 
which, which doesn't work because, because of it's, it's essentially a variational tool. Now, what we have to do, we, okay, uh, no, but that's, oh, okay, just a second, here. We love, actually, uh, with cell motility. I studied two-dimensional but two-dimensional problem, but Lev studied, and we had this we had full agreement that if something can be understood in one dimension, then it should be is a phenomenon. Uh, so I, I draw a cartoon of one so of one-dimensional uh, phase field model. <coughs> This is my phase field parameter. There is no curvature here, so this is an effective term. That's the only thing. So in 1D, uh, the interface is, is a point. But still, you can explain. So, so the, the key idea of, of taking the limit, and that's something which I'm going to be returning more and more uh, several times with cell motility and with uh, uh, with bacteria, it's a special time of asymptotic representation. Basically, what is at my disposal? If, I, if I'm not doing a massive computer simulations, what can I do? I can non-dimensionalize the problem and see which parameters are small, and then I should try to do asymptotics. And my point here, I mean, what's, what's you do when you, you do asymptotic, what you study in your first course? Uh, you write a series, perturbation series, you truncate it, and that's your asymptotics, right? And this is asymptotic series. Here, what worked, it's, this is asymptotic representation. There is no higher order terms here. So you have to guess. The, one of the most influential papers in, in asymptotic theory, there are, it's a beautiful theory. You've heard probably about matching asymptotics. It's a beautiful theory. But uh, one of the founders of asymptotics, uh, no, not founders, of course, but uh, one of the leaders in my time when I was a student was Vasily Babich in St. Petersburg, and he called an article called, called, he wrote an article called Art of Asymptotics. And the, the leading theme was that guessing the right ansatz is the key. And you have to do it. You can use your physical intuition. You can use a mathematical intuition. But if it's a hard problem, like, like here, we have to guess this is some standing wave solution. This is some explicitly constructed function from W, from the, and this is some but the unknowns here are this function and also position of interface. So it's a, it's a very tricky, it's a very tricky ansatz. Uh, and we, we construct it and based on some mathematical estimates, something called Poincaré inequality. When you try to prove, you try to justify, this is because this is what I, I can do. I mean, physicists could have guessed it from different. And always, I mean, and that's, for example, okay, I'm almost finished for today, so if you go back to, for example, fast and slow variable, right, Poincaré. This was a huge, this is how the whole homogenization theory started. You consider function of fast variable and slow variable, no, no one tells you to do that. But when he started to do that, he is in celestial mechanics. He was able to compute things which people analytically never were able to compute. And then homogenization theory, this were, those, those were ODEs. And homogenization theory originally started in Soviet Union and here by Jacques-Louis Lyons. And uh, and his group in, in America, by Papa Nicolaou and his group, and in Kharkiv. It started from trying to take this idea of fast and slow variable to PDEs. 
I guess what I'm trying to impose on you, because this is going to be also very, very critical for my future lecture in free boundary problem for cell motility, how to guess ansatz. And this was once you guess it, and then you do whatever, whatever you can, whatever your tools are, physical intuition, mathematics, then, then you can deal uh, properly with this problem. All right, so I think, okay. So just preview and, and then, because it's not clear when my le next lecture will be because of the strike, you already talked about that, right? Maybe you should say that people should look on the website of the Collège de France and it will say whether the lecture is there or not. Yeah, my lecture is scheduled on, on March 7. But I just learned today that it's going to be a strike. And then the proposition was not to find another day. That probably would be too difficult. You're all busy. But my two last lectures on March 20 and March 21 make them an hour and a half instead of an hour. If it's agreeable, that would be probably easier. All right? Yeah, so you can check on the website of College de France. Okay, so uh, what, what I'm going to, to uh, talk next time is this not self-adjointness, but specifically how it manifests itself, not some general mathematical concept, how it's related, how it arises in cell motility, how it affects analysis of stability, and <coughs> there is some work in progress in one-dimensional models uh, identifying culprits, physical culprits, okay? All right, I guess I have to give, yeah, exactly, yeah, I have to give some time for questions, if any, yeah.